So at each Democratic Party primary debate, it's easy to see why people are so turned off by corporate media, because it's not even like they're trying to uphold the facade of impartiality or fairness anymore. They just play favorites and shamelessly so. They don't care about the optics. They don't care how bad it looks. They prop up candidates in a very brazen way and um, people notice and we just have to deal with it because this is the way things are going. You know, it's frustrating because Amy Klobuchar was pulling at like 1.5%. She is given the front runner status at these debates. At the last debate, I think she got more talk time than Bernie Sanders. At this debate, she got more talk time than people who are polling higher than her. So mainstream media, they play favorites, right? The establishment centrists, they're their favorites, but the anti-establishment candidates, people like Bernie Sanders, they don't get the treatment that they deserve with respect to their polling status, right? Bernie Sanders is one of the front runners, but he is not given the front runner treatment like Joe Biden or Pete Buttigieg. And another person who is often marginalized at these debates is Andrew Yang. But thankfully, he didn't just call them out, but he demanded an apology from MSNBC because they are being brazenly biased against him. He tweeted, I was asked to appear on MSNBC this weekend and told them that I'd be happy to after they apologize on air, discuss and include our campaign consistent with our polling and allow surrogates from our campaign as they do other candidates. They think we need them. We don't. They've omitted me from their graphics 12 plus times, called me John Yang on air and given me a fraction of the speaking time over two debates despite my polling higher than other candidates on stage. At some point, you have to call it. And that's exactly it. And Andrew Yang is making a really reasonable request here. He's saying, look, I am polling higher than other candidates. So I should be given more coverage than them. Like, I mean, this isn't something that's difficult to grasp, right? Amy Klobuchar should not be given as much coverage as someone like Pete Buttigieg or Joe Biden or Andrew Yang, because again, she's polling at 1.5%, whereas Andrew Yang is in a solid, what, fifth place? But yet he gets disregarded and instead they give glowing coverage to someone like Kamala Harris, who is barely out polling Andrew Yang. They give more coverage to Mike Bloomberg, who is not polling as high as Andrew Yang. And... He's right, you just have to call it. And he's not lying because they have omitted him, like Bernie, from graphics over and over and over again. And overall, they just refuse to cover Andrew Yang's campaign. They rarely mention him. And on top of that, when you look at the distribution of speaking time at that last debate, moderated by MSNBC, you can see why Andrew Yang is angry. He got the least amount of time to speak. Now, when you add in the polling numbers here, it becomes clear that even though he was polling higher than four other people, they still got more time to speak than him. And it's even worse when you consider the fact that when he actually was called on, the questions that he got asked were just idiotic. One of the questions that stood out to me was they asked him, what would you say to Vladimir Putin in your first phone call as president? I mean, if you are tuning in and you don't know who Andrew Yang is, how are you supposed to take anything away from that, right? They're not giving him the chance to talk about policy substance and really lay out his agenda because unlike the other candidates, even though I don't necessarily agree with all of the policies that Yang is espousing, he's more substantive than someone like Amy Klobuchar, but yet she gets called on. She gets asked really serious questions about foreign policy and healthcare, but Andrew Yang gets asked, hey, what are you going to say to Vladimir Putin in your first phone call with him? I mean, what are voters supposed to do with this information? Nothing. Nothing. It's pointless. And they're only begrudgingly calling on him at all in candidates like Bernie Sanders because they don't want their apathy and disgust with these types of anti-establishment figures to be super obvious, but I mean, it's already pretty obvious. And Andrew Yang spoke a little bit more about this in an interview with CNN. Well, Anna, Americans tuned in to the debate earlier this week and they saw that I got called on less than any other candidate, including candidates that I'm polling higher than. And the questions I did get had virtually nothing to do with the core ideas of my campaign. And if this were an isolated incident, that would be one thing. But if you go back over the last number of months, MSNBC has literally omitted me from over a dozen fundraising and polling graphics, which it's not about me, it's about the 300,000 plus Americans who've donated to and support my campaign and the millions of Americans who know we need to rewrite the rules of the 21st century economy to work for us. Think about those people donating $10, $20 of their hard-earned money to put a candidate on the stage and then have MSNBC virtually ignore me for 32 minutes or when they tune into MSNBC to see how we're doing in the polls, it's like I don't exist.
Everything he's saying here is spot on. This is exactly what they are doing. And as a Bernie Sanders supporter, I can empathize with the anger of his supporters. Because if you are donating your money to this candidate, you know, and you're you're helping to propel their campaign, you'd expect the media to pay attention. But they're not. And that's really problematic, right? Because we can't live in a true democracy if people don't actually know about the choices that they have. The mainstream media has got to not just focus on their favorites, and they have to actually give fair coverage to all of the candidates. Now, as someone who supports Bernie Sanders over Andrew Yang, I stand in solidarity with Andrew Yang because I know in the future, no matter who I support as a democratic socialist, it's probably going to be the candidate that the mainstream media hates. So whenever we see this bias, we have to call it out because the mainstream media has immense power here. They are able to unilaterally choose winners and losers simply by not talking about a candidate. Like we've gone over this before, but the reason why in part Donald Trump was able to win was because the mainstream media gave him $2 billion worth of free advertising. Now, yes, that coverage was negative, but just the fact that they talked about him. It primed voters to think about Donald Trump in a way that they thought of other candidates, like he must be legitimate in their minds if the mainstream media is focusing so heavily on him. But candidates who get largely ignored, they don't take them seriously because if the media is not talking about them, if they're not part of the national discussion, then, well, they must not be serious contenders. So we cannot allow the media to choose winners and losers for us. That's not their job. Their job is to inform voters, educate us, make us as informed as we possibly can be before we make our decision in 2020. Now, I truly believe that fairness is the way to go, and we've got to hold them accountable. We can never let them off the hook when they are being blatantly unfair, even if it's for a candidate that isn't your first choice. Because if they're doing this to Andrew Yang, they're going to do this to a future candidate, and they're already doing it to Bernie Sanders, right? So they can't keep doing this. It's completely unfair. The fact that Andrew Yang is out polling people like Amy Klobuchar, but yet they get more time to speak, that is an issue. Now, one caveat, and I made this you know, point in my debate breakdown, is that Bernie Sanders and Andrew Yang, at these debates in particular, they are less aggressive in their debate style. Now, when you instigate confrontation, you know, you are going to allow yourself to get more time because that will, you know, facilitate a back and forth between you and someone else. And obviously that will naturally um, add to the amount of time you have to talk. But as, you know, moderators of this debate, it's incumbent on them to make sure that everyone is heard equally or at least with regard to their, you know, position polling wise. But the fact that someone like uh, Amy Klobuchar is treated like a front runner, but Andrew Yang, who had zero name recognition nationally, is out polling most establishment figures. For them to ignore that, it's absolutely insane, right? So I absolutely empathize with the anger that Andrew Yang supporters feel and Andrew Yang himself feels because this is completely unacceptable and good on him for demanding an apology right? Because this is, this can't just keep happening. They can't just keep ignoring candidates in favor of ones that they support. It, it's just, it's so frustrating. But um, this is the uh, media landscape that we are living in. They are all about propping up the status quo. And if you are not one of their favorites, they're not going to treat you fairly. They're not even going to pretend to try to be fair to you anymore. And that's just, you know, that's the state of uh, American politics. The media plays an enormous role in elections and their recklessness and favoritism is having an influence. Like, lefty people tune into MSNBC and view them as a trustworthy source. So people who don't know better are getting duped by MSNBC. And as, you know, people on the left, we have to call this out when we see it. Um, because this is bad for democracy. And that's not hyperbolic to say. This is bad for democracy. We need people to understand all of the choices that they have in front of them, not just the corporate friendly choices, but that's not, you know, realistic. So we just have to keep sounding the alarm. So uh, kudos to Andrew Yang and people like John Cusack who are, you know, calling out MSNBC here for being blatantly biased. The Humanist Report is fake news. Mike only cares about Crazy Bernie and his wacky socialist ideas. Sad, very sad. I'm unsubscribing.